This is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 25th of December, 2020. On the news today, with good Christmas cheer, California Attorney General Xavier Bacara has agreed to suspend the flavor vape ban until the November 2022 election. Might have something to do with the millions of signatures asking for a referendum vote. In Canada, the CVA is sick of the incessant scrutinization of the vape industry, and even worse, being compared to the deadly tobacco industry. So it turns the cheek once again and quotes a study indicating vaping could prevent 6.6 million deaths, and even under a pessimistic scenario, 20.8 million life years could be added to society if anti-vaping zealots would simply find a new hobby, like chasing a boomerang, or tie a roo down, or tan a pave hide. Anything more constructive than what they're doing now. In Time Business News, we find a moppet written article titled, Why Vaping is Set to Grow Even More in 2021. And after a little tomfoolery, we'll look at a Bloomberg article talking about how billionaires only got richer after China banned online sales of e-cigarettes. Yeah, the founder and vice general manager of S'more International are $16.3 billion richer this year, exactly a year after China banned online sales of e-cigarettes to its residents. Keep this story in mind when you hear about the U.S. vape mail ban in the 2021 federal budget, a.k.a. your $600 stimulus check. In Australia, it's Christmas Day 2020, and the vaping bogan drinks a beer while chatting with e-cig click. We'll take a look at that article. And the highlighted advocacy group today, naturally, is Legalized Vaping Australia. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Jim McDonald wrote this article back in November. However, there is an update that was just recently put out. California Attorney General Xavier Bacara has agreed to suspend the flavor ban until the November 2022 election. This is according to California vaping advocate Stefan Didak. The agreement has also been reported in Half Wheel. So there's multiple sources now saying that the California flavor ban is on hiatus until the referendum vote. That's good news for California. However, it's not all good news. In Canada, the CVA has to quote another study. Once again, we're all sick and tired of the same old incessant scrutinization and chastising of the vape industry because we know it's safer than smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. However, other people are out there spouting this and spouting that because they have their own agenda. Can you guess what it might be? I won't spoil it. You'll find out here before the report's over. However, there is a study that the CVA had to, you know, tell these people about, and that potentially 6.6 million premature deaths in the United States could be avoided if smokers switched to vaping. And even in a worst case scenario, lives are still going to be saved. Because that number is based upon the fact that if everybody that's smoking transitions over to vaping, all the health consequences of smoking would be mostly eliminated or significantly reduced. And in a worst case scenario, in the worst case scenario says that 1.6 million premature deaths could be averted. And those deaths that are averted would result in 20.8 million life years returned back to society simply because they picked up one flavorful vape. 
This article comes in the Vaping Post, and there'll be a link in the description below. Why don't you check it out? Now, doing the research for this week, come across this article. Sounds promising, right? Why vaping is set to grow even more in 2021. TimeBusinessNews.com published this article. Cool. Until you read it, and then you find out that your 12-year-old kid could probably write an article as good as this. Maybe even better if they had to do it for school for a grade. However, what they talk about in here is valid and true. This year, 2020 is going to end soon and we are entering 2021. Wow, there's a lot of thought in that sentence, isn't there? Electronic devices are used for vaping. Another brainstorming sentence there. You are familiar with the concept of an electronic cigarette, which is composed of an atomizer, a power source like a battery, and a cartridge or a container which contains the flavor. Can you dumb it down any more than that? The user inhales the vapors, not smoke. Therefore, inhaling vapors is called vaping. Yeah? Now, there are the latest devices and systems for vaping available on the market. What? Can you get it any simpler than that? I mean, who are you? What's the audience of this article that you're writing? TimeBusinessNews.com? What's the average age of your reader? Pod vape, mini pod, etc., are examples of the latest vaping systems. Pod vape, mini pod, etc. Did you do any research for this paper or did you look over somebody else's shoulder when you wrote it? I mean, I hate to sit there and bash somebody who's actually saying the truth and who's actually being positive towards the industry. However, what happened to the value of intelligence into today's society? Many companies are settling up their businesses to manufacture vaping products in 2021. The growing trend of these companies predicts the future of vaping in 2021. The vaping products will produce in higher quantities and will be available at reasonable prices? Well, not if all these taxes get enacted, they won't be. They won't be reasonable anymore. Not if these vape bans prohibit using cost-effective shipping methods and force us to use private carriers, which the corporations would love to have happen because, like the local convenience stores, they don't use UPS or FedEx or the post office to get their inventory. They have their own distribution system in place. Large corporations love it when you ban getting their stuff from mom and pop shops because that means that they control the entire supply chain from manufacture to distribution to sale point and they get to reap all the benefits of all the profit of that product. But that's business 101. I don't want to get too high tech for, you know, people. Might have to work out a brain cell or two, you know? Anyway, this guy, Eric Mark, I figure is the same guy that came up with the idea to do, it's the year without a new vape. Did you hear about that? Oh yeah, it's a great story. It's about how there's this guy named Saint Nick and Saint Nick controls a country and he decides that he's gonna ban all vaping. Only problem is this little elf comes to him and shows him some documentation and some scientific studies and says, Sorry, but uh, vaping is, is no worse for you than your, your hot cocoa or your candy canes. So you're a good man, and we know you're going to do the right thing. So 
the story ends with everybody gets a vape for Christmas. That one time. It's a beautiful story. This guy also come up with another one. Yeah, you're going to love this one too. Ready? Oh, sorry. Let me get me out of here. Ready? Grumpy Old Vapors. It's a story about two tobacco executives who are retired, and the one decides that he has a heart attack. He needs to reevaluate his life choices. And he discovers there's a safer nicotine product available on the marketplace. So he takes up vaping, and he convinces his other retired tobacco executive to try it to give up their deadly combustible cigarette habit. It's an amazing story. And I think it's written by the same guy that uh, wrote this article. Very simplistic lines. Not a very strenuous process. But I digress. Facts are facts. And even though the guy did not really put much effort into this tiny little article, facts are facts. Let's jump over to Bloomberg.com and take a look at the actual story that's going on right now in this world of ours. A vaping billionaire only got richer after China banned online sales of electronic cigarettes. Yep. S'more founder Chen Zimping, I believe is his name, is now worth $14.2 billion. And his vice of the company, vice general manager, now has a $2.1 billion stake in the company. Care to guess why? Because when the Chinese found out they couldn't order their electronic cigarettes online, they had to go into the stores that was owned by, can you guess? S'more International. Yeah. Yeah. So, take a look at the article if you're interested in reading more about how these uh, rich people got richer. And the story of how it happened and um, why they're as rich as they are now. But in the Christmas spirit of things, we're not going to harp on things. We're going to go and try and celebrate, right? Feliz Navidad. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. All that jazz stuff, right? So here's an article that was published today in eSig Click. The Vaping Bogan Chats with eSig Click. It's a good day for beers and vaping. Well, I don't have a beer, but I got my coffee. And I always got my vape. If you don't know about the vaping bogan, you ought to look him up. Go watch one of his reviews. And you'll understand why this guy makes the statement he does in the very first sentence of his article. Neil Humbler said, I once described Sam the Vaping Bogan as the closest thing we have to a rock star in this crazy world of vape of ours. And he stands by it. Great article. If you don't know about Bogan, check out his YouTube channel. Check out this link in the description below. It's a Merry Christmas. Which leads us to our vaping advocacy organization for today. Legalize Vaping Australia. Vaping is on life support right on the front page of their website. Yeah, in some places around the world, vaping is on life support. In other places, it's got some fatal wounds. Is it going to completely recover? Only time will tell. I know it's not going to go away quietly. (sighs) 
Legalized Vaping Australia was formed in 2017 as a joint initiative of My Choice Australia and the Australian Taxpayers Alliance as a unique grassroots advocacy and activist organization. Legalized Vaping Australia is dedicated to campaigning for the legalization and risk proportionate regulation of vaping and e-cigarettes across Australia. The Legalize Vaping Australia campaign is funded by supporters via donations and sales of campaign merchandise. We have not and will not accept funds from the tobacco industry. This website that they have, I love to go to because they spit the facts out wholeheartedly and without any apologies. Click on the link to see actual research that justifies why they exist, why we vape. Scientific research. I'm just going to have a vape and slowly scroll down this list for you to check it out. Oh, and while I do that, you know what? I think I'm gonna disappear for a moment. Beautiful list, isn't it? Oh, we're not done yet. Oh, we're not even a third of the way through yet. It goes on. Oh, we're get, coming up to the halfway point. You know anybody that uh, wants to argue about how bad vaping is? You can send them to this website. Show them the facts. Well, we're coming up on a three quarter mark. You think there's enough research yet? You think these uh, anti vaping zealots are full of shit? Yeah, these are all studies that document how vaping is always going to be better than smoking. And why people like me advocate for this with every free minute that we have. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, We've come to the end of our Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 25th of December, 2020. My message to you as always, keep on vaping. Merry Christmas and thanks for watching.